What up, y'all? It's your hometown hero, the real Adam Coleman. And I just want to take a second on my lunch break, man, to wish everybody a happy Juneteenth. You know what I'm saying? June 19th. I just found out uh, a couple of days ago uh, that apparently uh, the governor just uh, made Juneteenth a, uh, a holiday, at least here in Virginia. So hopefully it'll become a federal thing. Uh, but a lot of people may not know what Juneteenth even is. So I'm just going to take a quick second during my lunch break to kind of break a little bit of it down. And, uh, you know, basically uh, Abraham Lincoln issued the famous Emancipation Proclamation, uh, which essentially ended slavery in the Southern Confederate States in 1863. However, it wasn't until about two years later that word of emancipation finally reached a place called Galveston, Texas on June 19th, 1865. And that's when the last of the enslaved persons of the Confederacy were made aware of and essentially received their freedom. Now, at the time, chattel slavery still continued in the Union border states, as I understand it, up until the 13th Amendment was ratified on December 6th, 1865. Now, historically, there have been several dates on which African Americans and others have celebrated the end of slavery, but due to the announcement of freedom in Galveston in 1865, June 19th, or Juneteenth as it's called, uh, became one of them. Now, even though it's been uh, traditionally in uh, African American holidays, so to speak, I would argue that the end of American slavery should be seen as significant and celebrated, uh, not just by black people, but by everybody particularly Christians and those who claim to love America and celebrate its independence on July 4th. As a matter of fact, I would go as far as to say that without Juneteenth, or what it represents, July 4th is really merely a shell of the independence people claim that it's about. Now, here's why I say that. Now, when I was doing a bit of research on Juneteenth, I actually came across a speech that was given before uh, the New Jersey General Assembly by an individual who's identified as benevolence. All right, now, this happened just prior to the Revolutionary War, and this speech was later posted in the New York Journal in 1776. I was going to read an excerpt from it, and we can kind of see where I'm going with this a little bit. All right, it says, The true foundation of American liberty is in human nature, and the salus populi suprema est lex ought to be written on the hearts as well as on the foreheads of every civil magistrate, while the good of society remains to be the end of civil government. But is not the voice of slavery heard in our land? Does not the cry of oppression from half a million of wretched beings daily enter into the ears of the Lord of the Sabbath? Is the slavery of the unhappy African of a disputable or doubtful nature? Is it not a professed, avowed, absolute slavery in the highest degree whereby our fellow men, made in the image of God, rational creatures, capable subjects of the same divine grace, become, horribly to be told, the subjects of personal property and sold as beasts of the field, not only without the pretensions of even a supposed or a virtual consent, but directly contrary thereto. Forget the idea that these poor creatures are treated with more humanity in this colony than in some parts of North America. For however you may think they are favored, they are still slaves, and every Negro in our colony is a living, unanswerable argument against your claim to freedom. And as long as this precept stands in full force, that with the same measure you meet to others, it shall be measured to you, again in vain are your resolutions, associations, and non-importations. In vain will be all your attempts to enjoy yourselves, which you so unjustly and oppressively refuse to others. End quote. Now, again, this speech was given to the New Jersey General Assembly just prior to the Revolutionary War, you have a gentleman saying that unless we're you know, going to extend liberty, full liberty, uh, to enslaved persons, then there's this hypocrisy here as we're getting ready to gear up, if you will, and you know, defend our, our liberty, so to speak, against uh, the English, essentially. Right Now, keep that in mind for a second. I want to fast forward real quick to January 31st, 1865. That's the day that the House of Representatives passed the 13th Amendment, which had already been approved in the Senate at least before. Now, while the amendment wouldn't be ratified till December 6th later that year, on February 12th, 1865, just days after it passed in the House, it was decided that they would commemorate this historic event with a religious service. And one of my favorite figures of American history, Henry Highland Garnett, was chosen to lead that event. As a matter of fact, I'm going to read a couple of excerpts from it real quick. Uh, in reference to some of the hypocrisy that took place as this nation was founded, Henry Highland Garnett says this. He says, quote, yes. They boast that their fathers heroically turned away from the precious light of Eastern civilizations 
and taking their lamps with oil and their vessels joyfully went forth to illuminate this land that then dwelt in darkness of the valley of the shadow of death. With hearts strengthened by faith, they spread out their standard to the winds of heaven near Plymouth Rock. And whether it was stiffened in the sleet and frost of the winter or floated on the breeze of the summer, it ever bore the motto, freedom to worship God. But others, their fellow men, equal before the Almighty and made by him of the same blood and glowing with immortality, they doom to lifelong servitude and chains. Yes, they stand in the most sacred places on earth and beneath the gaze of the piercing eye of Jehovah, the universal father of all men and declare the best possible condition of the Negro is slavery. Let us view this demon, which the people have worshiped as a God. Come forth, thou grim monster, that thou mayest be critically examined. There he stands, behold him, one and all. Its work is to chattelize man, to hold property in human beings. Great God, I would as soon attempt to enslave Gabriel or Michael as to enslave a man made in the image of God and for whom Christ died. Now in reference to ending slavery and establishing full liberty of African persons in America, uh, Henry Highland Garnett goes on to say, quote, having the magnanimity to do justice to the poorest and weakest of her citizens, thus shall we give to the world the form of a model republic founded on the principles of justice and humanity and Christianity in which the burdens of war and the blessings of peace are equally born and enjoyed by all, end quote. And on that note, I go back to my previous point. July 4th doesn't really mean much or at least mean as much without June 19th. Think about it. If you love America, you should love Juneteenth too. But anyway, with that said, I'm gonna get up out of here, y'all. I'm gonna get back to work. Uh, get back off my lunch break here. But anyway, y'all know what it is, man. Love God, love people. Take care of the things that God blesses you with. Love y'all, man. Peace. <laughs>